This week on We Ride, we have beautiful titanium plastic party hands and Jaren dancing in a garbage sack skirt. Huh. Jaren and I are here at Walmart because we have to make a stop to get how much water? Like 80 gallons. 80 gallons of distilled water, so yes. this will be interesting. There's some, but that is what 80 gallons in the back of a truck looks like. And don't worry, we will explain why. All right, so we got all 80 gallons back to the garage. So Jaren. Yes? I think all the people are wanting to know as well as I did. Please explain all the water, explain this process, explain okay. why not a lot of people do it the way that you're doing it. Well, first things first, it takes a lot of time, and a lot more. Because normally when everybody does it, you uh, just use heat, right? That's what everybody's seen. Is you just take a blowtorch, you heat it up before, after you weld, whatever, and it takes like 30 seconds, okay? What we're doing is we're taking uh, little bits of acid, which is our little this right here. This is actually drain cleaner, okay? We take like a tablespoon of it and mix it in with about half a gallon of water. Um, and we have our little, little electrical anodizer. Basically all it does is it uh, holds a constant current, or yeah, constant current all the way through. And we hook one end to the pipe. And we take the other end to a, uh, to a sponge that gets dipped in the acid. And then we just rub the acid on top of the piping while it has an electrical current going through it. And the, uh, the voltages that we do is what makes the colors, okay? But the reason we have little tin, bin, little bin, we got two more bins in there, <laughs> is because to get the prettiest colors, you, uh, you do an acid edge, okay? On the acid etch, we have to fill one of the bins up almost all the way with, uh, it's a really low pH chemical. And for that, we soak these uh, in it for maybe 30 to 40 seconds. And what that does is it takes the oxide layer off of the titanium so that when we go and anodize it, we're creating a new oxide layer that is kind of formed the way we want it to reason we need more than one is after you stick it in the acid etch, you have to immediately put it in another bin full of distilled water. And for the distilled water, it needs to be there because otherwise, if you just let it sit out and you don't rinse it off, as it kind of dries up, it'll actually keep etching the whole surface and you'll just have a really uneven color all the way throughout. So he did a little uh, tester piece, which is actually gonna be for sale. Yes. It kind of gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. And what a lot of people don't do with titanium is get it polished. So yes. we took it to a guy that polished every square inch, square millimeter pretty much of all the piping, so it's just gonna make that color pop more. And most people, when they color the titanium, they're using heat, so like a torch to change it. Uh, this is a much more, obviously, much more in-depth process. So yes. here's the piping, and you can see his logo that's gonna be on there. Yeah. But the, the welds where it's taped off, where it's still silver, so he has to take this 3M tape, and as Every you guys have while. seen, there's, how many welds did you count? Like 100 so, or something total? This one has 70, and yeah. we never counted the rest. So there are- I think it's close to 100 to 130. I'm sure it's more than 100. So he has to tape every single weld precisely, yes. so it doesn't color the weld, so it leaves it silver like that, so you can kind of break it up a little bit. And Jaren spent, what, hours looking on YouTube trying to find somebody that's recorded this process? Yeah, no, I for, for piping, I haven't seen a single person do it the way that we're doing it. I know there's a couple people out there, but none of it's been recorded. Everybody always just does heat. So usually for this, uh, people will do bolts, small, tiny things, because it's really easy to have a little bit of the etching solution, but that's probably the biggest reason why a lot of people don't do it is it's, it's a lot pricier to do, but you have so much better control over the colors and... Yeah, it's cheap to take a just a propane torch to it, so... Way cheap. Like, this is... Uh... I mean, you can do it with a $20 torch from Harbor Freight. <laughs> this is the bougie approach. So that, since there aren't very many videos out there that 
Jaren could find, well, if any. This is kind of like your first look, ex exclusive, first time seeing this process on pipes or big items like this. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe there's some out there, but we couldn't find any, so. Yeah. Enjoy. All right, after how many hours was this? It's gotta be two or three. He has all the taping done on every single weld. So you can kind of get an idea of how it's gonna look, but flipped, right? The silver part's gonna be colored. It'll the blue sit, part's gonna be silver. And it'll sit just about here. So this is the part where it wraps around that four inch and then goes back down into the fender. And this is coming up off the turbo. And then this part right here on this corner is right where you're gonna see it through the bumper, that like tiger striping through the through the little hole. So that, it looks so crazy with all the tape on it. It really does. Oh, I'm excited to start, start coloring it. And now we have those left. Yep. So still a few more hours. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> As you can see, they're full on display. That looks so crazy. It does. That looks so good. <laughs> so he's got all the welds taped up. We have the bath. We just spent the last hour and a half boiling 18 gallons of water. So now that's up to temperature and we just have to submerge everything in there. He's already put the etching stuff in there. I guess, yeah, you gotta let out all the air bubbles or no? I guess it's just the outside yeah, just that the needs outside, it. So it's fine. Is that hot? Don't want to get it in there quick. Yeah. Because when it comes out, it'll still be etching itself uh, while it's going until it gets into the water. Last one. That's a big one. Please say it submerges. Oh. Yes. I have to hold this one in there. Yep, because of the air bubble. Yep. <laughs> I'm actually surprised we didn't get flagged at Walmart for buying all this, and now you're sitting in a garbage sack dress, <laughs> pouring acid into a bowl with a gas mask. Yes. If that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. <laughs> you can already see it changing. Yeah. It's going like a little gold color. Uh-huh. Because we're slowly just going to kind of ramp it up as we go on this one. Okay. Just so we can get the exact color we want. We're yeah. cranking it up to 16. Yep. So we're going up to up three. And we're okay. going to kind of see where it is. See if we can have like a kind of goldish purple. See if we like it. And then I'll just keep going from there. All right. All right, so we went over it with, what was it, at 16? Yep. 16, dunking it, so it was that gold. Now it's more of like a rosy gold. Oh, don't try it off. That's like even a oh, yeah. darker, kind of purplish tone gold. Yeah. That's crazy. 
that it changes like that. Uh -huh. Going from this to that. That's so crazy. If you guys notice, like while he's doing it, it's pretty mild, super subtle oh, on the yeah, color. Okay. But then when we rinse it and dry it, like fully dry it and blow it off, that color just pops and emerges. So he still kind of looks subtle, but then once you blow on it. And it really dries, that purple starts to come through. Dang, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, what do you guys think? Stay here or keep going? Well, by the end of this video, we would have done it, so. Mm -hmm. What would you guys do? Stay here or keep going? Yep, you're starting to see those blues. Purple, blues. Has that little tinge of purple through it. Uh-huh. I think that's, I think what that's do you think? It. That's the ticket. I think so. I think that looks good. Just a hair darker than that. Yep. That's it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Time That's to send it. Time to send it. So now that we dialed in the voltage that we want, these ones we don't have to work our way up. We can just go straight to that, go over it once, and we're done. And then we're done with the titanium intercooler piping. It'll be colored, and supposedly we'll get the motor for Frankie tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, yes. It keeps getting pushed back, but hopefully tomorrow we'll have the motor and then we can really see what they look like. But then Jaren has to build the titanium exhaust as well. Yep. So that's some more fun. And what are, are we coloring the tip? Oh, we're coloring the tip. Oh, we're coloring the tip. So we're, the we're gonna match the tip to the intercooler piping. The rest of it, not so much. I mean, it's gonna be under the car, so it's not worth dunking it and we don't have enough water and I don't want to boil water for another hour and a half. So the, just the tip, just the tip will be colored. This is Jaren's method of fully drying the pipe. We're almost there. In his Breaking Bad outfit. Oh yeah, mad scientist right here. Up a little bit of water left, but but for the most part, you can see that purple pop in the polish, giving that mirror finish. Oh yeah, it's still drying. You can see. So this isn't full to the full extent. Once it dries all the way, you can kind of see everything, but you can definitely see that color popping through. And then once we take the tape off, it's going to be all those beautiful silver welds. So it'll be like tiger striped. Oh man, that is so crazy. It is, it's magic. It is. That, that, to this. Mm -hmm. All right, now that we got the color dialed in, that voltage that we need, you'll see a drastic change on this one instead of going step by step. It's gonna start coloring it quickly versus that gold. Look at that. And now that we have that voltage dialed in, we just do one pass on each pipe and we're done. So what I'm gonna do now, while he's finishing that one up, is I'm gonna start pulling the tape off on the one that he finished, so the one that's drying on the couch here. So we have a decision to make. Do we leave the weld silver, so there's that big pop of contrasting color, or do we tame it down a little bit and go back over um, with that lower voltage so the welds are all gold? Decisions, decisions. Let's see how it looks with just the silver. working on the last piece, our pride and joy. The snack. The snack. That's cool. I like the gold and it's transitioning into that purple. Right. Looks pretty cool. I know. We'll do, we'll, do, we'll do it someday. Uh, uh, maybe on the next pipe we'll do a full like gold to purple to blue transition. Yeah. Crazy. 
taking all that tape off is gonna be a pain because on the other one it's already a pain. All right, let me show you what I've got so far on this one. So almost done, peeling it all off, but just that contrast on the corners on every weld, that pop, looks pretty sick. I'm excited. All right, so we are done. The tape is off. We had to bring everything out to the attached garage with the honeycomb lighting because, I mean, you have to see it. It looks so good. Do you think they're ready? I don't think anybody's ready, if we're being we, honest. We sat out here just staring at it and then realized it's 1 a.m. and we're like, oh, we need to grab the camera. Yep. So, without further ado, this is the piping that's going into Frankie the 240SX. It turned out absolutely phenomenal. Every angle, it just kind of changes. You get those blues, those purples, a little bit of gold in it. And then that, just where the taping is, just pops. It's like diamonds within the purple. It's just gorgeous. You can't help but just sit here and stare at it especially while it's sitting on a Viper. I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. And it just gave us more ideas to uh, do titanium for the Viper, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it has to happen now. And, and it might have to be purple. Yeah, I think purple that- good with the orange. It, it definitely goes well <laughs> with the orange. But you just, we just, we can't stop. We can't stop staring at it. It looks so good. Yeah. All right, so that's it. That's how you anodize titanium instead of using a torch. Yep, and it looks so much prettier. It's it incredible. Like you, you look at titanium online and you'll get like the flat look, which I'm assuming they didn't polish, right? Yeah, if you don't polish, like the brush is kind of like the flat brush, color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get the blues that you typically see, but that's normally with a torch, but like, mm -hmm. Getting this color, Jaron was explaining that it's like a fine line to yeah. where with using a torch, you're gonna pass it. You're not really gonna be able to hit this color. It's probably like just a few degrees of temperature that you could hit this color. And you'd have to have the whole piece be that temperature. Yeah. So this is yeah. unachievable unless you do it the way that Jaron did it. So. That or an oven. An oven could do it. Oh. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But you have to have an oven that holds like, I think it's like 850 degrees. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. I don't have that. <laughs> Mine makes rolls and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're gonna call it. It's uh, it's late. Uh, we will be back tomorrow though because supposedly we're getting the motor, so we're gonna throw that in and then maybe put these in. I don't know. Probably. Everything everything changes every day. Yeah. We plan to do something and then it gets put back a couple weeks, so. We will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>